get up Dust off the mask, whoever laugh, give him a head up He got jumped, it pumped his adrenaline He said it made him tougher than a bump of raw medicine To write all night long, the hourglass is still slow Flow from hellborn to free power like Lil Cole And still old bills, pay dues forever Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know This is going to be a sample shopping episode But this one is not sponsored by Decan Shop This one is in conjunction with CJ Scent And the reason that I know of this house Is because last week I did a video on Carlos, Carlos Powell's PLP Peace, Love, and Perfume Project. Now, Carlos is a member of the fragrance group The Good Smellers. He has his own YouTube channel, which I'll link to, and a Facebook group where people can discuss fragrances. And he's worked with quite a few indie perfumers on fragrances for his Facebook group, really themed around peace, love, and perfume. Um, so you can check the video uh, that I did on uh, that project and Carlos's um, collaboration sense uh, out on my channel. I posted that one should have been last week. So basically he sent me a bunch of samples from some different indie houses. And one of the houses I gotta tell you guys that I was quite taken with was a house called the CJ Sense. Um, CJ Sense did a fragrance for Carlos's group that was really lovely. And so I reached out to the perfumer and owner, Candice Jerko, I believe it's a Jerko, um, asked for some samples and she sent me eight of them. Uh, really surprised, they were all really lush, really high quality as well. And for brevity's sake, there are going to be three that I'm gonna discuss with you today in the video. Now, Candace began making her own scents in 2005, and in 2008, she launched her house CJ Scents. These all have very high quality materials used and high concentrations of essential oils. I'm going to link to her website um, in the description as well. She has a huge catalog of fragrances that are available and great pricing. You can get a sample of one for $2.50. You can actually get a sample set of eight for $18. You can get a half ounce perfume bottle for $26, a 15 ml spray for $28, a 30 ml perfume spray for $50, or a 60 ml spray for $75 and there are probably I'd say about 35 cents on her site. So the first one that I'm going to talk to you guys today about is my favorite and the one that you see here. This one is called Boo. There are only three notes listed on Boo. You've got pumpkin, sandalwood, and blood orange and I love Boo. It's a gorgeous fragrance. It sort of has that full air vibe. The pumpkin and the sandalwood definitely give it this, um, this like spiced pumpkin latte air, but it's also really enlivened and pepped up with that blood orange. So what you have in the composition is um, the very sort of fall centric pumpkin that you've seen elsewhere. You've got the depth and richness of a very nice sandalwood note that definitely has some gourmand quality. And then you have this very juicy, blood orange note and what the blood orange does in this one is cuts through that very decadent sweetness to give this fragrance a little bit of lightness and um, freshen it up a bit so i haven't seen pumpkin and sandalwood and blood orange used like that before so in the name boo you know pumpkin has the halloween association so it's a great name for this fragrance and i was unbelievably impressed by boo the second one that i want to talk to you about is another really gorgeous gourmand this one is called sweet memories and this one has a longer breakdown than most of the cj fragrances the no breakdown on this one is actually amber tobacco rhubarb vanilla custard vanilla sandalwood almond and coffee cake. And this one is sort of an exceptionally smooth gourmand. It's a really comforting scent. It's really rich. And there are a lot of layers to this one. Um, I have to tell you, I enjoy the coffee cake note very much and the vanilla custard. It's also another very high quality fragrance. Um, her scents to me have more of a feel of like a perfume extract within an EDP, um, so that's great at the price point. There's also a beautiful almond note in this one, and with the gourmand sweet notes, it does almost have an amaretto-like vibe, so this one a little bit is a bit reminiscent to me 
um, of Tonka Imperial by Guerlain. Actually, in that one, I think 75 ml of that guy is like $275. So this is a really good alternative to Tonka Imperial if that is out of your price range. Finally, um, we're going to take another look at another uh, fragrance from this collection, and this one is called Amber Wood. And this one I smelled, and it took me a little bit of while to place it. And then it hit me. This reminds me of some of the really high-end powdery ambers that are out there. So like Amber 114 by Histoire de Parfum, uh, Amber Precio by Maitre Parfumé Gantier, um, uh, Blue Amber by Montal, and the notes on Amber Wood are Amber Woods, Vetiver, Musk, Patchouli, and Incense. And I have to tell you again, guys, if you're looking for a powdery, a nice powdery amber, but have some price limitation, the 15 ml spray for this one for $28 is the way to go. I've always found that powdery amber scents have a very mature vibe to them um, and certainly an air of like sophistication to powdery amber so i'm a really big fan of amber wood and if i'll be honest with you guys if i didn't have amber Precio, uh, i'd probably put this one really high up on my to purchase list now that's sort of my summation on, on these three cents, but I also want to tell you guys that you really need to check this house out. I mean, if you look at what's on the scent, she's got a scent that's called Absinthe that has lavender, amber, and incense. She's got a scent called the Honeywood that's got milk, honey, spices, and cedar. She's got a scent called Titania, which is iris, cocoa, absolute, vanilla. They all seem really simple and they all have really high quality ingredients. And if you've heard me say this once, you've heard me say it a million times, and that is that that if you want to see the trends in perfumery normally you go to you, you you look at niche you look at niche in designer and they're not really I don't think setting the trends they're following them but to me it's the indie perfumers that are really deciding where things are gonna go they're the ones that take really all the risk normally they're heavily financially staked um, and making sure their scents succeed so they're gonna try to get them to you at the best possible price um, because there's competition among these guys and they also aren't beholden to a, um, a board or, um, or a corporate entity that won't let the perfumers take risks. Um, these guys believe in their product, they put it out there, usually they market it themselves, they advertise it themselves, they pour it themselves, they blend it themselves. So they're really connected to the fragrances which they make. And that's not to say that that doesn't happen within um, niche or even designer, but there's just a much more personal um, connection here. And because of that, I think you get higher quality and I think you get better prices than you do anywhere else in perfumery. So if you're scared off by the niche brands like a Roja Dove, like a Zerjov, like a Amawaz because of those price points, well, then you want to look for comparable fragrances within these indie houses, CJ Sense, DSH Perfumes, House of Matriarch, uh, Imaginary Authors, 4,162 Tuesdays, who I'm doing a collaboration with. Um, right now uh smell bent these are sebastian these are the houses that are really pushing the envelope and coming up with the the, the best stuff i think um in the fragrance community right now so check them out please check out this website which i will link to in the description and let me know if you have any questions about these fragrances i'll see you guys with more videos uh later this week i obviously am maximilian for Pardon him for the mix-up Battle for your Tari cartridges Or put your kicks up It's a stick-up